ครับครับคุยจริงใช่ไหมผมก็ต้องเตือนคุณทุกอย่างเกี่ยวกับชีวิตของผมนั่นคือสิ่งที่จะเกิดขึ้นดังนั้นฉันจะเริ่มต้นปีนี้ปีนี้คือปีที่1ของปีนี้ตอนนี้คือปีที่1ของปีนี้ฉันสัมภาษณ์กับผู้ผลิตเกมเดเวลลอปเปอร์มันดิมเดเวลลอปเมนต์คอมพานีว่าใช่ไหมฉันไม่จะมาดิสคัลส์มากกว่านั้นแต่ถ้าเป็นแขกรับเชิญโปรแกรมเมอร์ที่มีชื่อเสียงที่ดีที่สุดในประเทศและด้วยพวกเขาหลังจากการตัดสินใจเราไปต่อกันที่นี่เราไปต่อกันที่นี่จากที่นี่เราไปต่อกันที่นี่จากที่นี่เราไปต่อกันที่นี่จากที่นี่เราไปต่อกันที่นี่จากที่นี่เราไปต่อกันที่นี่จากที่นี่เราไปต่อกันที่นี่จากที่นี่เราไปต่อกัน And uh, in about like uh, March, April, we we decided to go forward. So I was I was done dealing with visa. Uh, they they have a like a partner or contractor or something like a, you know consulting company for visa things. And these so-called experts. And you'll understand why. I'm um, not happy about them later. They basically they went to. They were extremely slow. To every email of mine, they took two weeks to reply. So as you can imagine, by the time we were submitting my visa application, it took two months to get to that point. While it was supposed to be like you know like non-issue, they were unable to answer basic questions that I had about the application. So I never really got an answer, to be honest. I still to this day don't know what would be the correct answer. So I just went with whatever I thought was best. I they definitely did not help me make that application for visa at all. They were absolutely useless. So they caused months of delays. Months. They also told me, and they kept saying, without any change, as you may know, at the time there was a uh, in Eastern Europe, let's say, let's call it Eastern Europe, some kind of conflict happening, still happening to this day. Um, well, because of this, I um, or they experienced like you know delays. Oh, that's fine. Lots of immigrants and refugees, I guess. Also, we're going across Europe, and that's fine. Um, however, they kept telling me that it's still expected to have an answer within three weeks, four at most. Well, it took eight or nine. That's like you know, three times the expectation. Um, during this time, I I made my arrangements to move out, to move to UK and all that, and I gave notice at work. That because in where where I come from, we have really long notice period, so I have to give notice so that I'm not stuck for another several months after I get the visa. Dealing with that, um, and similarly, I get notice on my apartment. So. As the delays kept going on and on, and because of UK bureaucracy, arguably in other areas that I will mention later, I had to move out of my house, my apartment, lived in all kinds of hotels. There were bugs in those hotels. It was not pleasant. It was very bad. Like all kinds of, uh, what you call them, centipedes or all kinds of and things with a lot of likes. It was very bad. Yeah, that's, that's all I have to say. And the road is closed again. Okay. What's happening? Oh, there, there, oh right. I, I remember now. There is a stop. Well, 
Pompi 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 So Yeah, uh, it wasn't pleasant Especially because this, If you know me, you also know that I run a server Which hosts all kinds of services That are important to Not only me, but Many other people So I wanted to keep hosting all of that And it's not as simple as moving it to VPS whenever you wish um, Oh, why am I going this way? I was supposed to take the next turn out, not this one. Shit. Slipper leaves. Need to be careful. But leaves are evil. Just outright evil. Okay, I go this way. I need to... I didn't think about it because <laughs> I'm um, not used to take a detour. The road was closed. Anyway, hotels were not cool. I had to carry on my carry my server with me essentially through all those hotels, and uh, I acquired um, LTE modem, some you know, wireless connection mobile phone connection. That's how I function. I dragged around a really heavy server with, with me between hotels. It was not pleasant. I went through uh, eight or nine hotels. Shit! I think I should have went right there on that one. See, so that's what I'm saying. I'm not used to taking these eaters. Let's, let's take right on the next one, on the light. Yeah, I think we're gonna be good now. So, it was, it was a difficult time, but I survived. Um, I survived with all kinds of um, uh, impacts to my health, both mental and physical. Like, we go left here, and now we go right, and we're out of the detour. <laughs> Don't bother, I'm blinking right to make sure that they know that I'm going right and they just don't give a shit. Typical. British roads on the back. Nobody can see you. You're invisible. Look at these guys, you're gonna stop. <laughs> so... Um... Hotels. After the hotels, I, I got visa everything sorted. Right, okay, that should just... just that don't worry about stopping early enough, lol. <laughs> Jeez. I get sorted by hotels. Next. I, um... Uh, what was next? From hotels, I I had to deal with house, right? Because I I turn out, turns out it's so impossible to find a house when you're not at in the area where you're looking for a house. I don't understand why, but you can like they will just give it to someone else. They're just not gonna give a shit about you trying to move into the town. You need to be there in person. So I came here. And I lived for two more weeks in a hotel. It wasn't even a hotel, it was just uh, like a short-term rental apartment, that kind of stuff. I, I just call it a hotel. Just don't mind me. It's not that fancy. <laughs> I'm not that fancy. I don't know that's rich. I was. I'm not anymore. Anyway. Um, so... I, I got a housey. Um, eventually. Um, that that was a really funny chicken and egg problem because you need to have a house or have an address in the UK in order to get a bank account and I needed to have a bank account in order to get money from my employer in order to pay the damn um, like rent and deposit in order to get the house the lettings company would not agree to signing the contract before I paid 
like they wouldn't sign the, uh, the contract so I couldn't have a contract I couldn't have a, a, a bank account and even after I moved to the house I was physically living in it I still did not have a contract in my hand I still couldn't go to the bank and get a bank account I was literally living on like noodles every day basically because we didn't have money for food none because I, I was, you know, start, like I didn't see an income on my bank account, old one, mind you, for two months or three months at that point. All of my savings were gone. Um, oh, big debt, incurious, no? Yeah, let's go left here. Actually, kind of last minute decision. <laughs> um, so, um, uh, uh, yeah, it was a really big chicken and egg problem. Why are we over breaking for that human for Why? Go away, your little car. I don't want to be behind you. Go away. Make space. <laughs> so, what is happening next? Um, we solved the chicken and egg problem eventually, right? I paid the deposit and the rent thanks to my friend who directly paid the, uh, the, the deposit to the letting company directly wired the money uh, and I later in two weeks gave them the money back when I got something from my employer um, next after that even when we were in the house in the new house I didn't have any of my belongings I was stuck in a warehouse for three months at that time uh, in a warehouse somewhere because I couldn't ship them until government, UK government, not only like until I had visa, but after that you need to submit an application for a transfer of residence to be able to ship your stuff to UK. Well, that took another eight weeks after I got moved to UK. So for two more months. I didn't have any, any belongings and within my belongings I had not only, I mean, this bike and other kinds of quite useful things um, such as bed I slept on the floor I am taking second one here um, Right, so, so I had to sleep on the floor uh, bought some uh, cheap IKEA mattress to not sleep actually on the floor, but it was still on the floor. You know, it wasn't raised off of the floor. And at the time, because all the furniture from all the, all, all the landlords or whoever lived there was gone, all the spiders came out. And it was a really hot summer as well, and it was like, you know, just lovely weather for them. And they were huge. Like, that size of jumping hunter spiders. I'm not kidding. Like, insane hunter spiders. They don't make spider webs or anything, they just run around and jump and they're scary as fuck. So that was really pleasant when they just kept coming at me on the floor, sleeping, lying on the floor at night. I could see them in the dark, just walking across the room. I am gonna not go there. Am I gonna... Where am I gonna go? Where am I going? I don't wanna go on the highway, I'm, I'm going across, I'm just... Wait, next one left maybe. Not through traffic, some construction, oh fuck. Uh, we'll see how far I get. Uh, so... And that's all. all. Turns out, in the UK, it is not customary to clean and refurbish the house when you have a new tenant. Apparently it is not, like, I don't know, maybe it is, maybe the one or is just a dickhead, I don't know. But the house, the carpets were dirty as fuck. Sure, they paid for cleaning, however, they were worn out dirty, like, they were running around in shoes, that's normal in UK, on the carpet. That's really fluffy, and it consumed all the dirt, permanently. Worn out, disgusting lines, like, you can see the paths, how, how people walk uh, in, in the room. And where the, there was furniture, it was really nice and clean, right? Uh, we are gonna go right. Actually. So, really bad, really bad, huh? Ugly. 
and that was all like the fridge, the kitchen, now, like they said that it was cleaned. Bathrooms were nice and clean, that I will give them, that was clean, and I did see it before, while the landlord was still living there, that was not clean, that was not nice, <laughs> like that was really horrible, I would be ashamed of living in such a place. Um, what else am I gonna tell you? Uh, fridge, was smelly, stinky, moldy, had to clean it for like, really badly. Um, Washing machine, black, completely black wall everywhere. I had to have uh, replaced all the seals and everything. And that took like uh, two months nearly because the person replacing it kind of screwed it up the first time I had to come back again. So I couldn't even wash my fucking clothes even after living in the house for a long time. So still was like either going off of supplies, mind you, that was like one suitcase or one or Or. Of course. I heard doggers. Or like, you know, using public laundries. Um, next. House problems. Done. Right. We solved. We survived. <laughs> Eventually I got uh, my stuff, including this bike. Mind you, also financial hit. Um, going to the office every day. It's five and a half pounds for me by bus. On this bike, it's 10p. That's the financial difference of using this bike. However, it's not all that pink. It's, <laughs> it's not a walk through a pink garden. You need a fucking insurance from UK company, right? Because for me, as someone who moved in from outside, despite having 15 years of driving license, I literally reversed more miles than 90% of people ever went forward. Why was that cyclist in the left lane? They were supposed to be on the right lane. Like, what are they doing? That's not how... Yeah, whatever. Um, left lane was turning left only and he was trying to go straight. Wrong call on there and... Even you're a cyclist, you still use the correct lanes. It doesn't mean that you need to be on the edge of the road. Um, I know, I know. Very passionate mountain bike. I use... Bicycles as well as motorbikes. So, um, the bike insurance, right? So they don't give a shit about your previous experience. How much did you drive without crashing and any of that? They just like my insurance ended up being more than double, it's pretty much triple of what it should have been if they had taken all of that into account. So like they didn't. Um, really expensive. It was, I think like I'm paying like 550 pounds of insurance for this electric, pretty much 50 cc equivalent, tiny, not nothing, you know. Um, in Czech Republic, my insurance was 20 pounds a year, and it was premium insurance. That wasn't even the basic one. So yeah, it's brilliant. I don't see any... Yeah, okay, that's a private draw. <laughs> I can't see anything. <laughs> so... What's the castle over there? That's where I'm going. Just check it out, you know. I'm not gonna go like inside, just you know, looking around a little bit. Interesting. I'm just gonna leave my bike over here and go for a walk. So Everything is stupid in my life, and, and I'm nowhere even done. Next problem. Um, next problem? 
ஆயிரம் I guess I'm not going to record this out right now. Okay, that's, that's all I have to share. I ended up in 20,000 British pounds. And that basically... Credit scores, right? I, I can't get a loan to repay my bad... Bad... That basically that I managed to okay because uh, like that the only loans I get are just shit. 
Interest rate things like with 25 plus percent interest rate. Uh, because credit scores, you don't live in UK, you don't have any history, therefore they consider you to be absolutely zero and you can't even borrow anything. And another chicken and egg problem. In order to improve credit score, you need to borrow and repay. But you can't do that. Nobody wants to give you anything. I can't even get a fucking phone contract. That's how bad it is. Really joke. <sighs> okay. I'll go take a look at the castle thing. See you guys later. <laughs>